Thank you for these uh, very stimulating talks. Stu and Arnebrand, I have a question for, for, both, for whoever wants to take it about uh, microtubules and, and quantum computation. So, as you know, there is a huge amount of excitement about quantum computation in the physics community now with millions and millions and millions of dollars being invested to try to build these devices and it's proven very, very difficult. So, if it turns out that you guys are right and microtubules can actually do it, uh, I would love to hear do you see a, a scenario within a few years where that's going to be the way to build commercial quantum computers for factoring, for hacking your credit cards and doing standard uh, quantum computations? Um, first of all, I would like to answer to your question that um, I asked Roger to volunteer, uh, to, to give me a chance to answer to your question. First of all, um, I had this discussion with Roger several times and I think that he has told several times that we do not want to build, we do not want to um, proclaim that quantum computing will be done, he suggested always that there would, there would be a new kind of computing that will come. And whether we would tell that term, we would assign that term as quantum computing, even the quantum uh, computing word, there are a lot of philosophical aspects of it, as you know, and he argues that Godel incompleteness and other kind of things sure. come. So it's a beyond Turing kind of philosophy. So uh, there are a lot of issues about it. So, and also another point is that um, quantum computing um, is about logical device and everything is systematically done. Why nature? Um, 3.5 billion years ago when they created microtubule, they do, nature did not study quantum mechanics textbook. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> so just, uh, let me just apologize for not clarifying my question further. Because I, I, I think if you guys are right, you're undervaluing the importance of, of, of what your claims are. We're not the, undervaluing it. You are. But in, in, the, in the sense that the, the, maybe you don't care about want, uh, building you know, commercial quantum computers, but a lot of people out there care about it a great deal, right? So if, it's, if you guys are right, well, if and if, if, if it's, I mean, Roger Penrose might also think that it won't work because gravitationally induced wave function collapse, but a lot, of, a lot of people out there investing in tens of millions, right? So do you think that, that they will try to build, do you, if, do you think they can build quantum computers using uh, microtubules, even if you're not interested in it? Well, I am interested, but I think it's possible. First of all, let me say that, when, we, for example, when we went to the first qubit of each tubulin is a, is a qubit to the vibrational patterns, it's kind of like a topological quantum computing. I was at the, uh, Roger invited me to the uh, Royal Society in 1998, the first big me meeting on quantum information. And uh, John Preskill gave a talk about topological quantum computing in an orthogonal grid. And I was kind of dozing, and I, I woke up, I said, could that happen in a hexagonal grid, like a microtubule? He said, sure, no reason. So we, we began to develop this model that, that is uh, with Jack Dusinski and Roger and Honorbon, where the, the bits, the information, are not the individual tubulin, but the, the helical patterns. And that's very resistant to decoherence. Now, Roger objects a little bit because to, to, to him, topological means something else. And I'm not... Uh, it's at a deeper level. But if you think of it just as pattern, uh, helical resonant patterns, uh, which can interact, I think it's a very robust uh, possibility for quantum, a form of quantum computing. Now, microtubules are bio biological and they're kind of hard to maintain, but it's, I've always thought that it's possible the same sort of thing might be implemented in fullerenes, for example, uh, car carbon nanotubes. Now, the problem there is to get the consciousness effect. If you're talking about just quantum computing right. topologically, yeah, that could be done. If you're talking about consciousness, you need enough no. E sub G uh, and and uh, nano carbon's a lot smaller, so you need a lot more. But on the other hand, you can make as much as you want. So the answer to, to both, I think, is conceivable. I don't think uh, we're going to get consciousness in a computer by, you know, the way people are doing now, but maybe in some type of topological uh, device, either microtubules or fullerene, something like that, maybe. Uh, I would just like to add some uh, comment to it. First, um, before my um, lecture, I, I said that people often make a mistake, even though I'd, I reversed my Present presentation today, I started from large scale to the small scale. You saw such a brilliant person like Max Tegmark also made a mistake and put me that microtubule is going to do everything. Like, just saw, see his questions. I'm not in the uh, microtubule bandwagon or I'm suggesting that microtubule is doing every single computing, not everybody. I mean, at least 
I mean, I talked to Roger and, and to him personally also. Nobody is saying that all the computation is done only in the micro and no, nobody, no one else. You saw that in my presentation, I took several other, I mean, hundreds of proteins we have taken and measured the resonance frequencies and we are going to higher scale and higher scale and higher scale. So trying to find out an integration pathways that is connecting several different hardwares in the biological system. So that means to trying to devise out what could be the way, searching for the truth. I mean, it is not, the, not a religious belief at trying to impose a cult of microtubule. So if you, if you modify your questions a little bit, I will be honored. But I'm, Thank I'm you. still very mystified by why you have this enormously hungry and very rich community of people trying to solve this problem, where if you actually have a solution, why they're not going after it? Because didn't you after all say, and I'm, I'm trying Can to I answer really that? understand. Can I answer that? I just want to understand, didn't you say in your, in, on a slide that a single microtubule even if indeed the brain is also doing other stuff, can actually do quite a, a number of steps. You had seven steps, I think, before it decoheres. W weren't you arguing that it can do that? And wouldn't people love that in the quantum computing industry? They would if people like you would stop trashing us. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. I think money speaks louder than Max Tegmark. If you can <laughs> make the millions of dollars by having a component that cost almost nothing to build, well, you know. Well, Christoph's been trashing us too, and he's got a billion dollars, so there you go. Uh, uh, just going to your question that, of course, if, um, if really um, we would have believed that um, there is a, it is a quantum computer and a quantum computing chip or other things, then definitely would have built other, other kind of devices or structures. But um, going by the results that we have, that resonance vibration and other kind of structures could ultimately lead towards a new kind of computing device or systems. Uh, my postdocs have already devised a, a small set of molecular structures which can grow on and on and on, and we can get chain of vibrations throughout the system, and we, ha we have demonstrated um, in, uh, in January how these systems can compute much faster and much f farther. So it is not that we are not building. We are building this and several products are being, are being constructed. So, so it is not that the knowledge that we are gathering um, is remaining un, um, unused or, or it is, does not have any applications. Um, uh, just by uh, harping that you say it quantum, so those people or DOA people must use this device. This is, you know, is injustice to the kind of science that we are trying to explore. A biological mm. system, it has a lot of different knowledges, right? Injustice. And, and it could be, yes, the word injustice I used is, uh, as I said in my previous con comment, that when we try to explore the fundamental properties of a material, we are honest scientists trying to explore some particular properties. So it can have a new kind of, it can give birth to a new kind of computing a completely new kind of computing unseen before. So that kind of device we can engineer, we can build, and we can sell it to the commercial, to the outside. Why do we need to be a quantum computer? I mean, why are no, you pushing? Yes, then I would be very, very, <laughs> I would love to be <laughs> discussing. So, so there, there could be a new kind of computing in the brain. You know? We do not understand what is the information in the brain. We do not understand what is the memory in the brain. We have published in the microtubule, but we do not think of that. It could be something very new, no? Let me just say one final thing here, because this, I think this is, doesn't have to be this, this confrontational. Uh, you, you used words like uh, trashing and, 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 and so on, and injustice. You know, I, I, was just, I was actually trying to be sincerely constructive here. I love quantum computation. I, I, you know, I think it would be incredibly cool if we discovered a new, much more affordable way of doing quantum computation quite independently of, of how awesome it would be to understand that that's happening in the brain. I mean, I, wouldn't it be cool if I could tell my friends I have my own quantum computer? So I'm not, you know, I would be delighted if it turns out that you're right, even if I'm personally guessing that it, it isn't working. And what I was trying to say in a constructive and friendly spirit here was that I think the most effective and powerful way for you guys to convince the world that you are right ultimately might be to, in addition to, f to focusing entirely on the questions that drive you of consciousness, to also see if, if you can actually do something with the microtubules that uh, other people have failed to do with their systems, because then that you would get an enormous amount of, of, of uh, help and attention from the big world. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Just a second. I, Max, come on, man. 
You wrote that paper in 2000. You, you made up your own model and trashed your own model and, and blamed us, okay? And that was devastating to us. Science wrote an article, Cold Numbers Unmake Quantum Mind. You know, a year later, we used your formula. We, we, uh, we plugged in the correct numbers and got a good result in, a, in the same journal you published, and nobody said a peep about it. The damage was done. It was considered, many people said it was, that was devastating, okay? You didn't know what you were talking about. You were trashing your own model, okay? Christoph's done the same thing. He dispensed with us in a footnote in page five, and, okay, I'll show you.